Hello everyone and welcome to my talk. Uh, well, basically this is a rehearsal for the talks conference. I'm going to speak uh, on Saturday uh, well, at that conference and basically it's not really happening in Munich, which was the plan before the coronavirus, um, but it's going to happen digitally and I'm very happy to be part of the lineup. So um, basically my talk is about me, today um, and I want to I want to tell you my story right I want to tell you how I came in touch with creative coding and how it basically changed everything that I did and what I do to do today so it affected many many aspects of my life and here's how and here's why it happened all right so 2013 was a very important year for me because I was graduating from the Münster School of Design and uh, well that was a very nice place to be um, Münster is a great city and I really enjoyed being there and I had the opportunity to work in a class for elementary design as a tutor or assistant and that was the moment when I decided to to uh, well to teach one day right um, Basically, in my studies, I've been focusing on music videos because I'm also a producer, a music producer, performer and composer. Not really anymore because today I'm not focusing on that much, but uh, at that time I was very active as a musician. And uh, basically, this is the architecture of the Münster School of Design. It was a very clean building, uh, very inspiring place, I think, and I really love to be there. So. But as I told you, in 2013 I was graduating, so I had to make a decision how I shall go on. And because my father founded a startup, uh, he asked me to join the company, which was a furniture, a very new furniture brand, uh, and he asked me to, to do the marketing for, for it. And that's why I went back to my hometown, Paderborn, where I still live. Many people think Paderborn is very boring. I can tell you it isn't. Ah, it is boring. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's it's true. Okay, Paderborn is quite boring, but it's a great place to be because it's the nature is awesome, and I really enjoy being here. And um, the thing is that I was very unhappy with my job. I felt like you know I I just wanted to make some experience, and I thought this marketing job could be something that where I l learn new things, and I, of course I learned a lot, but marketing is really not my thing right I felt like this is and especially working with parents is extremely can be very exhausting and for me uh, I was quite unhappy with my job but as always when I'm unhappy I escape into creative work into free and self-commissioned creative work and then that time as I told you I was making a lot of music and my solo music project was that well, that canvas that I was painting on in a, in a metaphorical way. So um, I loved to buy some new equipment and build an um, improvised live looping based live show, uh, which was fun, right? I had synthesizers and a looper and a drum machine and I was playing live gigs in small venues and stuff. That was really cool. And one day I met this awesome guy here. He, he's called Patrick Hübner, one of my best friends today. Um, in Paderborn and at that time he was a very successful e-commerce designer basically the design lead of that company right and um, he made online shops for huge companies but he had the same kind of the same situation as me he felt bored as well and we were thinking about how we could collaborate and because Patrick is a very talented programmer as well um, we thought about a project a free project where you could join in UVIC music thing I was doing and um, the idea was that he could make the visuals for it and because Patrick had no experience in, in making visuals with the VJ software or something for him it was more or less nature natural to do that with a programming language and because I've been addicted to you know to, to lend books from the library in Münster and I knew that there's a book called Generative Design, which shows incredibly complex graphics uh, that can be programmed with a programming language called Processing. Uh, I showed Patrick the book. And from that moment, 
that changed his life, right? He started to learn processing and create visuals for our live uh, music project. And that was incredible. He was super inspired, super motivated and super productive. And I was kind of jealous a little bit. <laughs> And um, yeah, that's some of the stuff that, that you do when you start programming with processing, right? So you work with loops and make pretty nice graphics, very complex things. Processing is great to create, uh, well, controlled complexity. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool to get started with, right? If you want to dive into programming, processing is a great entry point. And um, yeah, so this is the live show that we that we did, right? So um, don't worry, this is a three seconds loop. This is not a lag in the in the in the connection. Anyway, so in the background you see the visuals that have been projected with a beamer with a projector in front of the in front of the uh, stage, and there's me making music on my setup, right? Um, and in the background you see these audio reactive generative visuals and that's a very important keyword here because audio reactive means that when I play the sound Patrick's computer recorded that sound and transformed it into visuals right so think about that so we had an input which was the music and we had an output which was the visuals thing on the background of the stage right so we transformed through the processing application, we transformed um, music into visuals. Sorry, I'm sitting on a gymnastic ball. That's why it makes those sounds here. <laughs> um, so if you want to explain generative design, this pattern is very helpful for that. So you can use generative design to, to, to uh, transform an input into an output. Wow, that was super cool. We played gigs, we had you know, we had, we, had, we had concerts and people loved what we do. We had kind of a USP because we had a, you know, integrated live show into our, um, you know, into our music project with visuals, audio reactive visuals, generative visuals. And that was kind of new, especially uh, in Paderborn and where we, where we were kind of playing gigs, right? Around Paderborn and in North, North Rhine-Westphalia. And because we felt like this project has a lot of potential, we just started to scale it. And um, we, Pat, Stefan Schneider joined us. He's the guy on the left here, a fantastic person, one of the nicest people I've ever met, a great drummer uh, and a very inspiring person. And these were the band photos we did, right? Patrick's visuals projected onto us. But at that time, then I felt a deep crisis inside of myself because from that moment when I saw how creative and how inspired Patrick was when he learned processing and creative coding um, and how incredible the results were and how wide this ocean of possibility was I felt super bored of making music and there was a very in, that was an overwhelming conflict because we were starting to plan a tour. We were recording um, stuff. We wanted to make an album and we were really putting a lot of time and effort. And Patrick and Stefan were very, very motivated. And I felt like I don't want to go on like that. I don't want to make music anymore because I've done music already since 15 years. I felt like I want to go into creative coding. And in that situation, I felt this huge pressure on me, right? We, you know, people or especially my mates were just expecting me to make bookings and and uh, talk to venues to get get gigs and stuff. So that was really a deep crisis for me. And I decided to break up. I decided to quit the band project after a phase where we really were very motivated. And there was, of course, a problem for my friends Patrick and Stefan. And, um, it was very difficult to to get Patrick back onto the track because you know I saw huge potential. I wanted to learn creative coding by myself. I wanted to go this way and um, well do my own experiments with that stuff. And I saw that we could do that together. And I had to talk to him, and we were a bit fighting in the beginning, but in the end we just uh, were yeah resetting everything and decided to go that path together which we still t still do, 
By the way, Patrick is also living in Paderborn still. He's a very, very successful generative designer today. And we still meet on a very regular basis, like twice a week or something. Anyway, um, what we did, we did something that we today call coding in the woods. And coding in the woods was kind of the kickoff event for my creative coding career, right? It was the time when I started to dig deep into coding and deep into processing and generative design. So we rented a wooden cabin in the woods of Witzenhausen with, we were Patrick, me and Lukas, also a very good friend of mine. And uh, we had the mission <laughs> to explore generative design in that week. No internet connection, no cell phone connection, just three guys with three laptops, you know, being there and, and you know, exploring creative coding. Lots of books, we had lots of books with us, but no internet. And that was really, really cool. It was extremely inspiring and I still have so many nice memories about that time. I was creating these GIF files, right? I was creating these uh, animations that I've pushed on Tumblr and interestingly, people seemed to like it. <laughs> um, people shared my work, it, it was popping up on Instagram, uh, no, sorry, not on Instagram, but on, on Pinterest and Google and uh, on several Tumblr blogs about creative coding and generative design. So that was really nice. And um, I was on fire, right? I, you know, I felt like this is exactly what I want to do. And here's a little showreel of a few things that I've just created in that time. Uh, most of them are self-commissioned. Some of them were applied to branding projects. Um, yeah, many different things like, you know, uh, particle systems, some music video experiments, some interactive things for the web browser, some, uh, well, branding cases like this one. That was a short film that I've created. And yeah, that was very interesting to explore this infinite universe that was locked by the door of the, you know, of the barrier of learning to code. That was important to, is, it is really a little bit like a locked door, right? And you have to take this, you have to jump over this wall to get into the room. And inside there, there's a huge universe of possibilities. Yeah, 2017 I started, well, I just started freelancing and I was quitting my job in the company of my father. And um, yeah, since then, basically things are going very well, right? And in 2018, I luckily had my first commission or my first inquiry for a teaching job as an educator at a design university in Camp Lindford, the um, Rheinwald University. And the brief was to create a course or to do a course on creative coding for graphic designers. But I remembered that in Münster, we also had a creative coding course for processing with, I think there were about four students in there. Nobody really understood why programming is important or interesting. And so that was not inspiring, right? And I knew that I have to inspire my students to show them what's possible in this sphere of graphic design and creative coding. So what I did, I created this project called Programming Posters, which was basically an, a deep exploration in coding and graphic design. And I try to really go into the, just try many, many things out, try to connect uh, these posters with data, with interaction, with mouse, or sometimes I use the camera uh, to control things. So that was a very deep explorative project where I tried to illustrate what's possible in the sphere or in this intersection of design and technology uh, and specifically coding. And, uh, well, this was very well received. The Page magazine brought a seven page article about that and blogs were, you know, most of the design blogs about communication design just re uh, or the, just posted an article about that. And from that moment, I was getting a lot of awareness for that thing. And that really helped me. These are my students from Camp Lindford. Uh, we were an international class with people from Russia, from Great Britain, from France and from uh, Asia. And that was super cool. So that was a lovely class and a lovely time I had there. So in 2019, I was getting my next job as an educator at the Fachhochschule Dortmund. And there were about 54 people in the room um, waiting for the teacher to come in to teach them creative coding. That was crazy for me, right? People were standing at the walls. I felt like, you know, 
the whole whole room was full of very nice creative and 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 you know inspired people that was awesome to work with them and i really enjoyed that semester yeah so um fast forward today i can say that and i'm very proud of that that i empower young creatives that's basically my job and i feel like it's a little bit also my mission and i want to you know i want to teach technologies and and method methodologies to empower young people in this sphere of art design and technology and that's what makes me very happy and uh, yeah i conduct workshops i do you know i sometimes i cond conduct meetups like the creative coding days in the netherlands i've built a few communities about creative coding like the generative to re uh, generative design research network i do a lot of research and i'm building a e-learning platform which is my most ambitious project that i've ever done so this is a very you know this is a kind of a course platform that you can uh, do on my website and here's a you know here's here's a snippet or a short video with things that I've created in the sphere of e-learning, um, some tutorial videos, some co one course is online now called Creative Coding Essentials, where you learn everything you need to know if you want to start working with processing and generative design. So, and I'm working on lots of new courses and a lot of new content. Um, yeah, that's something very exciting, and I really enjoy doing that. Yeah, so um, I want to show you two more projects because I think they kind of illustrate how creative coding or and well, coding can <laughs> enhance graphic design in a specific way. One of them is called P5 Studio, and it's basically a website that you can visit. It's a web application and it's made to design posters. So it's a application in the web browser built in about two weeks that you can use to create uh, real poster designs that can be downloaded in high resolution so this application well, with this application I want to I wanted to uh, demonstrate and illustrate that web technologies can be used to create production level design applications right it works very well. You can go to my website, go to this case study, click on the button and it will pop up. Um, I think some of the fonts are broken, but that's not really important. Uh, you can use the whole interface to design your own, your own posters, right? If you do so, please send me your designs. Okay, that would be awesome. Cool. Um, and the second project I want to talk about here is called Lifeline. And Lifeline is basically an archive or a database of all the events that had influence onto my personal life. So I'm collecting events that shaped my life anyway. And this is basically a WordPress website, a WordPress backend, and I can connect this WordPress backend with processing. And that's what I did in this project to create um, generative um, visualizations of the things that happened in my lifetime. So. This is, well, Lifeline, a timeline showing all these events, events in the database, right? It starts in 1985, that makes a lot of sense because that's the year when I've, when I've been born. And uh, the further we go into the, into, uh, towards the, the present, the more elements pop up there, right? So these blue elements are things that happened on a global level or on a historical level, like, you know, the invention of the of the Nokia phone or the Nintendo Game Boy. Um, and the red events are personal and private. So here you can see me at the first day at school, right? And uh, yeah, this works with processing. It's a rendering process that needs about, I think, 15 minutes or something. And you can put basically, in theory, you can put any data into that backend and it will be visualized in that way, in that kind of timeline uh, visualization. That's it. Thanks and uh, well, have fun with the next speakers. Bye bye.